here's a question for you. You've got three very different beers, all with the same beer name. What are you going to do? Just got to roll with it, right? Yes, yes, Rascal and Disco Beer Review with me, Disco, coming at you with another beer video from in front of the cans and bottles here on the bar that I'm still stupendously calling the Disco Arms. Mega review for you today. Probably my most ambitious beer video today. You might say too ambitious. But I've got three beers, three very different beers, all with the same name. Roll with it. I don't know how that happens, whether it's random coincidence or what. Uh, how you feel about beer names. I like beer names personally. Uh, some say they're a bit superfluous, uh, but I think it's an added bit of fun. And when I see these kind of coincidences, they amuse me. Don't see it too much, despite the amount of beers about the place uh, available these days. Uh, they all seem to have unique or fairly unique names. I did have a pair last year that were the same. Didn't actually feature them uh, on the channel because uh, I wasn't sure about some kind of trademark or copyright issues. Year before, I had a pair of beers called um, Caught by the Fuzz from 71 Brewing up in Scotland and Windsor and Eaton's Uprising Brewery. Uh, I put them together on an Instagram review and the brewery said, oh, that's kind of funny, just a coincidence. Um, I presume, uh, uh, let me know how it works if you are a brewer watching this, if you could. I'm interested. I presume brewers, when they put a beer through the brew schedule and decide on the name, they just like go on Untapped or something or just even Google, see if anyone's done it before and whether there's any issues or not. I don't know. Anyway, I've got three with the same name. They all come out at different times. Um, two are currently still commercially available. One isn't. Uh, two I've actually had before. Uh, this one I had put on a review uh, on Instagram. Uh, it came out last year, so this is kind of the original one for me. Uh, this one uh, was out early in the year and is still uh, available. And this is kind of the reason, the catalyst for this. A review that came out the latest and kind of sparked a little thing in my mind. I've had a beer with that name before, so I thought we'd look at it. Uh, not only that, two of them are specifically designed with food stuffs in mind, so I've got some food to go along with them as well. Got a lot to get through, so uh, let's get them out into the glass uh, and we'll talk as we go, hopefully. The first one up is this one here from Drygate Brewing in Glasgow. I've had quite a lot from them uh, over the last couple of years. You might remember them from. Uh, a beer called Disco Forklift Truck. I've uh, featured that one a few times along with lots of other beers. This came out last year. Uh, it was based on a, a discussion they had on Twitter uh, about what would make the breast beer with uh, breakfast items based on a uh, Scottish breakfast uh, with the old square sausage uh, and uh, all the customers uh, on Twitter uh, did a Twitter vote and decided what uh, components would be best suited into the beer. What they come up with is 6.5% tangy brown ale. Get into that in a minute. Uh, this one uh, I did actually uh, put on one of the videos. I got it from Tesco's uh, way back at uh, the beginning of the year, uh, as I did Scott's from Scott and Wonders World. Uh, £10 Tesco's challenge. I didn't actually review it in the end. Uh, the reason for that mainly is because uh, it's 5.2% double dry hot pale ale. And I'm not normally a big fan, as you probably know, of anything that specifically mentions hops or hot content or anything like that, and especially double dry hot. I did try it. It wasn't too bad, so I'm going to have a little uh, deeper delve into it here. Um, this one doesn't come with food stuff, but I have got a food to go with it. Uh, this one is from... Wild Beer, uh, up in Somerset, it's a collaboration brew with Robbie Knox's Bin Day Brewing. Now, a little confession to make, if you're not sure who Robbie Knox is, I wasn't sure who Robbie Knox was uh, until he started brewing beer and he came across on my beer radar. Uh, but a eminent YouTuber, I uh, started out in sports, I don't watch TV sports that much, so I didn't really know. Uh, but he started home brewing over lockdown and then ended up uh, with his own beer and brewery's gone down uh, a lot of collab uh, beers and this one 
Uh, it was brewed up at Wild Beer, who uh, do a lot of uh, wild fermentation and slightly unusual beers. This one, uh, talking about unusual, uh, it's 5% mixed firm medieval apple beer. Now, uh, there's a video on there, we'll put a link in the description that uh, Robbie Knox did uh, when they showed uh, the brew day uh, up at Wild Beer. Uh, it was a, a medieval um, brewing technique. Uh, got a large barrel for part of the mash, um, uh, mashed in with the water, which they then heated up uh, with hot rocks uh, that admittedly uh, they produced by the not very medieval technique of heating it in the outdoor pizza oven, but hey, needs must, etc. Um, heated up that and then mixed it with the, the main mash uh, and then <clears throat> added apple juice. Uh, the reason for that is, as I say, it goes with a uh, food stuff. Uh, it's based on a video we've not did about finding the perfect sausage roll. Uh, so they went about trying to find uh, the perfect beer to go with a perfect sausage roll. So I've got some sausage roll. I've got a sausage roll for a start. Uh, we're not my local bakery, uh, Wenzel's, uh, which is kind of like Greg's, but for northwest London and the outer home counties. Uh, so popped up there this morning for that. The Drygate one, told this might be a bit too ambitious. The Drygate one, uh, obviously, got a very basic bacon roll. I was going to put sausage in it, but I didn't quite have the time. So a bacon roll, don't get me started on whether that's called a roll or a balm or a cob or a button or a bobbin or whatever you call it. Where I buy it from, uh, Wenzel's, they call it a roll. Up here in North West London, we call it a roll. I just call it food at the end of the day. The vocation one uh, doesn't isn't designed for a food pairing, but I thought, well, I've got to find something something in keeping with the theme as well. So I went at Waitrose, got some of their not so finest lemon Swiss roll, which I thought would go quite well with the um, hop content and the floral and the tropical notes of that one. Well, that's a rather crowded viewpoint, <laughs> but as I say, quite ambitious. Uh, let's start uh, with the original one. This came out last year. Um, I've had this one a little bit too long in the stash. I didn't quite know what else to do with it, but fortunately, uh, it kind of goes with one. It's a few months past the best before date, but it should be okay. Uh, nice and bubbly out into the glass. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a brown ale, kind of aroma, lots of maltiness little bit of smokiness again it's probably muted a little bit uh because it's been in my stash well well over the six months so designed to go with uh bacon so it's got hints of bacon uh that, i say that smokiness smoky sauce smoky bacon uh and a little bit of tangy fruit from uh they just added uh brown sauce i personally prefer red sauce but i'm not afraid of uh, having a bit of brown sauce here and there but if i'm talking bacon roll uh, or breakfast roll, I'm generally going uh, red sauce, tomato sauce. Cheers. <clears throat> yes, I remember now. Like I say, I've had that one before, so I'm not going to pretend that this is any surprise to me. Um, there's less smokiness than there was now. There's a little bit more on the tangy fruit. Uh, going towards slightly tart, slightly... Um, Sort of slightly, there was still a, a kind of tomato-ness, but there's also like the sultanas raisins uh, that you would get from a brown sauce. I don't generally do breakfast items with beer, uh, ever since a particular all-nighter in 2001 in Ibiza. A pint of San Miguel would fry up, kind of ruin the experience for me. Uh, but a bacon roll with, uh, with a beer during a session. Kind of soaks up the beer a little bit. I would say, if anything, when I had this last year, there was much more smokier flavour, so it's much closer to the bacon. If anything, the malt here is probably more like a brown roll, like a home roll. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure about food pairing, food and beer. I think most beers go with most foods, although there are some that are probably better. That one, 
It's actually a bit of a start for a 10 for the day. Only 6.5%. Don't really notice it. That tang comes through a little bit later, that fruitiness. I think it does work. There's hints of tomato uh, there. I did put red sauce in that. Still, a mighty fine beer. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, that one, like I say, it's a great start, a beer start for 10, for a day's drinking. Um, in terms of time scale, this was the next one I got the vocation. 5.2% uh, double dried hot pale ale. Ooh, big, big tang on the nose and the aroma. Yeah, there's some big tropical fruit notes. A slight amount of hoppiness. I should probably do this one last. Ah, it doesn't matter, I'll be fine. Cheers. Probably see that in my face again. It was no kind of surprise because I do vaguely remember it. It is drinkable, it's perfectly fine beer. It's just that little hint for me that I don't like. I said it before, I said it at the weekend. Um, that little hop note on there just doesn't sit right for me. The grapefruit kind of tang, and there is one on it. Again, it's always that one at the start, that just that initial hop burr of kind of grapefruit. It doesn't quite sit well on, on my palate. Once the beer travels down, I mean, I can still drink it. It's still perfectly drinkable. Um, I get kind of a bit used to it, the palate. And I would have thought by now, doing all these beer reviews, and oh, I've been drinking for a while and, and probably getting into it a bit more, my palate would have changed. But it's still there, still noticeable. So it's not a beer style that I in, it's not a beer style I enjoy initially, but it's always perfectly drinkable. There's a little bit of citrus on there. So I went for the lemon. That is not the best sausage roll. Bit surprised at that coming from Waitrose. <laughs> I don't really shop in Waitrose that much unless I'm buying some beer, so I thought I'd put this up. Because I thought it went pretty well. It does go well. If anything, the lemon in the sausage roll, an extra little bit of kind of readiness, works quite well with the malts on that. And the kind of citrus flavour it kind of enhances it a little bit for me. Not that I'm going to go around buying sausage rolls every time I buy this, but it just works as a pairing. That's what this is all about. Rather than comparing three different beers with each other, I'm more comparing the food stuff that they're designed. Well, this one's designed by me to go with it. Uh, on to the big show then. This is the main, okay, main, main event. It's the latest one. Um, I said, uh, there's a great video uh, on Robbie Knox's channel uh, about how it, how it was brewed, why it was brewed. And at the end of the day, a sausage roll and a beer is a really good pairing. Um, I'm not sure about the apple with it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of pork and apple. I know it's a great combination. Um, if I'm having a, uh, like a roast dinner, I normally have horseradish sauce, mostly because I don't like apple and potatoes together but no potatoes here just a sausage roll so probably work just as well uh, and apple in a beer not a cider uh, definitely apple in a beer uh, and that medieval uh, brewing technique really interesting uh, worth having a look at don't get oh well, yeah there is a little bit of apple uh, not in this not initially It's a, yeah, it's not a strong apple aroma, but there's definitely something there. Maybe a touch of smokiness, maybe that's, maybe I'm just thinking there is because of the, the, the hot rock technique that I was talking about. Anyway, cheers, roll with it. Hmm, okay. I don't think I've burnt my palate out just in a few mouthfuls of the other things and the lemon should kind of cut through it all, but um, I don't think there's a strong apple taste there. Like I say, it's not going anywhere near sort of cider apple. It's more of a sort of a hint of apple. Um, if it blended with apple juice for an apple tang, yeah, 
that, that's more and again as it travels down the poly the apple will uh, build up and get more it's a very pleasant pale ale slightly unusual with that kind of hints of appley tang on the back yeah much more so now right at the back end there's that kind of apple yeah like you've eaten an apple it's like the kind of it's more towards the rind than like like fleshy apple um it's not massively tart or anything like you know some apples you get like well the apple tree in my garden there's a lot of apples but they're viciously tart these ones works well works well not a massive hot content quite tasty well here's the litmus test then um i don't know whether wenzel's are the best sausage rolls uh they're the best for me because uh the my branch is only just literally up the end of the road so let's see if these are a good sausage rolls and whether it goes with a beer Proper flaky and crumbly. Nice meaty taste. Quite quite oily rather than fatty, but very well spot on sausage roll to be fair. Cheers. I've got to be honest, I don't know. Is it the perfect beer for a sausage roll? I often get asked what's my favourite beer or what's my go-to beer. And my favourite beer is pretty much the one I'm drinking at the moment. So, on that basis, yeah, it's a pretty good pairing. I think it gets slightly tartar. That kind of apple does cut across the, the oily, slightly fatty, uh, meaty notes. I presume it's pork. Didn't even check, but I presume so. A little bit too much pasty. Been hanging around a bit too much. But fresh, they'd be proper spot on. Sausage rolls. It's quite light as well, say 5%. Tastes a bit less, quite light on the body. For me, a perfectly decent pairing. The best for a sausage roll? I don't know, that comes down to individual preference. For me, yeah, it's pretty good. Would I be rushing out to pair them? Not necessarily, um, although I have, obviously, <laughs> for the purposes of this video. But at the end of the day, three very tasty combinations, three very tasty beers. What do you think? Uh, let us know in the comments. Was this video a little bit too ambitious? These two probably deserve a uh, video of their own to look more at that combination. I'm going back to it. I always tell I'm intrigued by a beer because I'm going back to it, trying to find some more notes. That apple core flavor is kind of uh, getting more and more noticeable as it goes down. Uh, that sausage roll is nicely spiced, so it does bounce off that a bit more. Maybe I should do that standalone uh, on its own. I've got another can, maybe have another look at that. But this video is far too long I did say it's ambitious so let us know what you think let us know sausage rolls let us know what you call a bacon roll bomb cake butty whatever uh, I've been Disco of Rasco and Disco beer with you till the next one cheers yeah it's a wrap that's lunch
Ooh, there it is. 